Good morning. How are you all doing? Yeah? Here we are. This is what, when we started this, where is James here? Is James even here this morning, back there? When we started, yeah, I know, right? When we started this, we all knew that we were on a mission, creating a religion, creating a movement. It is simply amazing. But deep down inside, when you look inside yourselves, what do you see? You're computer scientists, right? Some of you think you're superheroes, maybe. I certainly wake up thinking I'm a superhero. But what you want to be is a computer scientist, superhero artist. We are walking around as technologists, as developers, with an incredible amount of swag. It feels great to be alive, doesn't it? We have such power, but with power comes what? Great responsibility. So what I'm going to like, what I'm going to try to do, Sam, in the next 14 minutes or so, is give us 10 steps, 10 things to think about that will help us be computer scientists, superhero artists. Because we need a canvas, and that canvas needs to be stretchable. We need brushes, many different brushes. We need colors. Lots of different colors, and we're going to build paintings. But the difference is that those paintings aren't fixed. You need an etch a sketch. You got to be able to change that painting. And that's what Cloud Foundry gives us. The canvas is your infrastructure, the brushes is the middleware, the databases, the colors are the APIs, and the painting, well, the painting's the unicorn. And that unicorn's moving, <laughs> okay? So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, in 10 easy steps. The first step, you guys got it, you're here. Thank you so much. You're at the Cloud Foundry Summit. You're participating in this community because last time I was on stage talking to you all, I said, look, we're building a platform for the people. Get it? Platform? I'm on a platform for the people. And we're preaching because it is a polyglot world. It's about mixing and matching runtimes. It's about getting APIs. It's about doing what you need to get the job done. So thank you for being here. And the immense amount of uptake that has just occurred in such a short amount of time is unbelievable. At IBM, we created a platform, Bluemix, built on Cloud Foundry. We've got 8,000 developers signing up a week. That is a testament to what we all have done together. It is simply amazing. And at that last conference, I challenged everyone. Hey, I said, hey, please sign up for IBM Bluemix. Give it a try. And you all did with say, mixed results, sign up now. Give it a try. It is awesome. Learn how to use Cloud Foundry. Step number two, your brain. Now, I tend to be on the more analytical side. That, that building on the left makes me feel On the right, looks great, but doesn't make me feel so good. There was a study done back in the 70s, 70s on architects, real architects. I mean, not that we're not real architects, but physical architects, right, who build buildings. And they found that the best architects combine the left and the right-hand sides of their brain to build something special. So if we want to be artists, we have to learn how to bring these two worlds together. It is about building function with form and design, taking a design thinking approach. Because we'll never build a cathedral if we don't think about the end user, whether it's an API you're building, whether it's a piece of marketing material, whether it's a piece of documentation you're contributing, take that approach when you think about this. Now, number three, code, community, and culture, okay? Code is great, code without community is useless, and without good culture is just toxic, <laughs> okay? So we, as a community, already have great code. We've got strong community and a wonderful culture but we need to continuously focus on that because no application, no community is an island, right? I, met, I was walking by and I crashed some meeting with a finance firm. And so, you know, they certainly know this. They've been using Swift to connect, you know, banking applications. This is great, yeah? Everything's connected, but everything's hyper-connected now, right? Everything is kind of coming in and out of your value chain. You need to be able to manage that. So, Number four, you need to think about four things when you build on cloud. First of all, you need capability. You need capacity, compute, storage, network. You need a platform, right? You need to be able to deliver that on-premise, off-premise. Sam, you mentioned hybrid, 
right? A connected cloud, but there is not a single cloud, right? There, there isn't one. There's many, and there's many places that you connect. So what you want to be able to do when, you, when we build out the Cloud Foundry platform, right, and we continue to innovate and drive code into the code base, is to build a cloud that makes all of them behave as one, your cloud. So it is very important that as we build skills and we think about how this stuff is being used, we understand the reality of where this stuff is going to be deployed. All right? Behind your four walls, outside your four walls, everywhere in between. Because no application is an island. And, you know, we've been doing our darkness to try to experiment with that. Let's talk about a couple of colors. Diversity, lots of colors. I love colors. Right? We've got a client that's here, and they build an application. Uh, it's a gaming company. And they build an application to determine when they should offer discounts on downloadable content. I don't play video games at all, so I don't know much about this. I'm out of my comfort zone. But they use, tw they use the Twitter, right, to look at uh, what things are going on and when they should do this. But then all of a sudden, they had access within Cloud Foundry and Bluemix to look at the weather channel. Because guess what? When it snows in the East Coast or you got bad weather, <laughs> People are home, bored. Their kids are, you know, sitting there, and the, and the parents give them the credit cards. Huge. Yes, I know. You do that, don't you? Do that. That's not good parenting. Can someone call the parenting association? Um, because that's when they should be giving the discounts when it's bad weather. So this is just an example of a painting that had to change, right? If you build a monolithic painting, Mona Lisa, it's beautiful, right? But what if you got to change it? You got a new color to add. Right? So that's what we're trying to do. So there's a couple of really cool brushes that, uh, that we kind of tried to time to give some more excitement to the event. You talked about our friend Bill, right? We have a .NET build pack, which we'll be bringing to the community. We also have a several other um, uh, kind of brushes that we're bringing, some things focused on getting access to open data, which is kind of a... Um, a government uh, format for data, uh, some, some, some stuff around KPIs and some other interesting brushes. But a, a really cool brush that I think is really neat is one about getting access to proximity-aware mobile applications. Now, we all, certainly in the Bay Area, are very familiar with the idea that we're being monitored, centered, and with everything we do. You can't walk like from here to here without 10,000 devices knowing what you're doing. The problem is, there's no apps. <laughs> <laughs> we're connected. We're not doing anything. We, as users, imagine the power if you can use Cloud Foundry to bring together all of this information, right? So I challenge you to do that, to start to bring in those brushes. And of course, my favorite one, which is a dating service for APIs, a dating service for colors, right? Imagine if, as a developer, you don't have to really worry about the semantics, about the data matching, about the security context. You can get at the interfaces you want and build your applications quicker, right? Those are the kinds of innovation that helps us build that cathedral, Sam. So, five, community, I'm sorry, code. Now, look, everybody know what Knuth Volume 1 is, 2 is? Because if you don't, you should just leave. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> right? Knuth, we're computer scientists, guys, okay? You know, I used to teach graduate-level computer science, and I am appalled at the garbage open source that's out there, okay? It's freaking garbage code, right? Look, think when you code. Reuse stuff that works. Don't rebuild. Look, we solved the sorting algorithms years ago. It's done. You don't need to do it again, right? Reuse code. Make sure that your code is well-formed, documented, reusable. Because code that you put out there in open source is kind of, and that no one uses is like putting out garbage, you know, and, and the garbage man doesn't come or person doesn't come, right? It just piles up, right? That's not good. Hashtag no bueno, right? You don't want that. <laughs> so, so let's work on this. Six. Now let's talk a little bit about community. Spaces. We need to create spaces. This concept of a dojo. Okay, this concept of within your own companies creating a center of excellence where you give permission to yourselves. You don't need permission from your bosses. You got that. Permission from yourselves to build with confidence. Know that there's no boundary. Allocate time to think before you code. Use all of that time. The very first squad 
was not Spotify, who does Squad, and kind of started talking about how they do agile, DevOps, continuous integration, delivery, blah, 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 with squads, right? It was Monte Python. <laughs> and if you look at how they did, how they built up their squads, it was simply amazing. They reached out to experts when they needed help. No idea was bad. And their best creativity was done at the bar. Now, I'm not endorsing libations, OK? And coding, that's, that kind of maybe goes in the wrong direction. But I am endorsing fun, OK? Having fun within your teams. And that's what we need to do here, and we do do. And we've been doing it in IBM as well. We, when we build our software, whether it's Cloud Foundry or all application, we are having a freaking blast. These are photos from my lab here. I got to show family pictures, right? You know, everybody has family pictures. So family pictures of my teams here in Silicon Valley. I mean, the energy is amazing. And we're always, by the way, and we're always looking for more teams who want to come join us. If anyone wants to come, you're welcome. You know, give me a call. We're always hiring. But, <laughs> but you know, this is the kind of fun that we all have as a community. And we have at enterprise scale. And by the way, hats off to you all. All right, hats off to Pivotal for, for bringing this to an open foundation. Let's give them a round of applause. OK. Hats off to all of the sponsors, all of you all here. And let's not forget the press and the analysts. I mean, there's maybe, maybe four or five of them there, because we've got to spread the word, right? Yeah, I know you think your blog is great. You know, my cat reads it, and my mom reads it. That's it, right? <laughs> so we need the press. We need the analysts to spread the word. So let's give them applause as well. Thank you all for coming, all right? Because an open community and open governance and a meritocracy and a clear vision of how you can go from an individual contributor to a project leader is how these things are successful. And we can do that now with Sam's help and what we did starting December 9th. Nine, culture. Two examples on culture. Oh, perfect timing. I'm doing great. Two examples on culture. I have this big clock in front of me. It's just ticking away. <laughs> culture. 3M. The sticky note. Does anybody know what a sticky note is? I was informed that cool kids no longer use sticky notes. They actually do it on like computer programs now. They're virtual sticky notes. I'm like, I'm sorry, dude. I got sticky notes at home. I put them all over my walls. You know, the sticky note, the way it was created, some engineers came up with this thing that was sticky, kind of sticky, not sticky, not sticky enough. You could unstick it, stick it. Oh, what are we going to do with this thing, right? 3M didn't kick them out. They said, look, keep on experimenting, figure it out. I would say they created something pretty cool, right, that has been very, very usable. That is an example of good culture, right? Now, an example of perhaps not so good culture. You know, there's this... Uh, beer company in Germany, right? And they do distribution of their libations. And at the time, they were doing it kind of early in the week and then didn't do much later on. And they always did it that way. And they couldn't be competitive, right? And so they basically falling behind in the marketplace. You go through World War I, World War II, modern days, what's going on? And they kind of said, well, why do we always distribute beer on the beginning of the week? Why can't we just, you know, with the whole FedEx thing or whatever, I don't know, can we distribute beer? <laughs> More times. He said, well, we always did it that way. And they did it, right, because they were fuel rationing back in the war days and horses would get tired, right? That's why they did it that way. So question things. Question Sam. Question the community. But question with purpose, right? That was the difference here. They're trying to do something to change their market. A good thing to question. Just don't be a kind of a, a person that's negative, but question with purpose, okay? And in fact, one thing, Sam, that we're very proud to announce, probably the, the most proud thing that I'm, that I'm trying to announce today, is that we're going to try to help bring all these things together. We're opening up the first of several Cloud Foundry community dojos. We're going to sponsor this one. I suspect others will be sponsoring other dojos as well as the, years go, uh, as the time goes on in Raleigh, North Carolina. I mean, the vibrant community there is unbelievable, okay? It is like... Silicon Alley, is that a, an applause? Thank you, thank you. Can we get more of an applause for that? Come on, thank you. All right. So you're gonna be able to go 
pair up with folks who are already in the community, do pair programming, go through the dojo process, and rally North Carolina. And we're going to build out a center of competence there. We're doing it here in San Francisco. We do it in the Bay Area. We're going to do it all over the world. That is how we spread the word. We spread the word by communicating. We spread the word by showing how you build that cathedral. You spread the word by hands-on keyboard, right? So number 10. What is number 10? 10 is all about you. 10 is you. It is the painting that you create. In order to do that, you need to make sure you build a cloud that is open by design and that you use a cloud that is open by design. And then you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to look in the mirror and say, you know, my painting looks good, but man, it was a rough holidays at Sam's house and I put on a little bit of weight. I got to go hit the gym and work out a little bit and change my painting, right? Get it? Painting's your code, okay? You could also work out too. That's what 10 is about. Do not be rigid. Constantly change, constantly innovate. If we do these 10 things, if we do these 10 things, I have no doubt, next time we're here together, we're going to triple the size of this audience and there'll be even more Cloud Foundry owners. So thank you so much for attending and thank you for listening. Take care, everybody.